It's a new day guys and I'm back with another raft video. Today I'm going to help you guys decide whether you should buy raft in 2021. Let's get into it. Before the video starts I just want to mention that only 5% of my viewers are actually subscribed to the channel. Now if you enjoy this video please feel free to scroll down, hit that big red button and join the family. Enjoy the video guys. Raft is an open world survival game with both single player and multiplayer and it basically tells the story of a guy and his child lost at sea. They build up their own little raft, they go through islands, they scavenge whatever they can find, fighting off mobs as they progress, like the boar, the warthog, the birds, and all that sort of stuff. And then eventually, they go through this storyline where they discover what happened to this lost modern kingdom, and they find their headquarters, and they find places where they've been before, and they just discover all these secrets. The great thing that I love about this is the fact that the storyline is so expansive, and it can still be expanded in the future. And Raft are planning on doing that. As you know, Chapter 3 is going to come out pretty soon. I say probably before September time so you guys should all be getting ready for that because that will be the next big progress update in Raft and I'll see a lot of people coming back to the game to see what is new. Now what puts Raft apart from other survival games is the pure freedom it offers you like a lot of games are too survival focused and they don't focus enough on graphics or they don't focus enough on the storyline whereas Raft I really feel like you get the whole package you've got the storyline which you can progress at your own pace you're not forced to do anything. You can just simply scavenge islands for the rest of your life. You don't actually have to start the storyline. It might push you along a little bit and tell you and give you hints as to where to go, but it's completely your choice as to what to do next. And that is the beautiful thing about Raft. You feel like you control the world. You control what goes on. You can make your Raft as beautiful as you want while sustaining yourself with hunger and thirst without actually having to start the storyline at all. Or you can completely skip the Raft decoration. Don't even bother with making it look pretty and just go straight into the storyline head on within an hour you can pretty much start it and get a receiver going and all that sort of stuff so it's really your choice as to at what pace you play the game furthermore obviously you got the creative mode like you have in minecraft with unlimited resources so if you're not fancy and having to deal with thirst or hunger go in creative mode you can build whatever you want test things you've got survival mode obviously which has peaceful difficulty easy difficulty and medium and hard and obviously as you go up the difficulty it gets harder to survive. You don't have to constantly focus on surviving. You don't have to constantly focus on purifying your water or constantly cooking your food. Because for the most part, Raft is very good at immersion. You kind of get lost in this isolated world where you're the only one in the entire ocean. And then the feeling of finding a long lost civilization near the end of the storyline can really feel rewarding and can almost be like a temporary break from all the isolation that you get in the game. For example, the monsters that you encounter can also help with this. And the fact that you can play with friends is probably the best feature in the entire game and I hope they soon add servers where you can have multiple rafts in one server. Another unique feature of raft is definitely the fact that as you go along the storyline you can progressively unlock recipes. You can't craft everything from the beginning. For example engines you can only get that about halfway through the actual storyline but once you get it it feels so rewarding and even with the new furniture update you can get packages so even the basic things you don't unlock straight away. I'm going to move on to a very important feature for me personally in any games that I usually play is the community surrounding it. Now, as far as communities come, the Raft community, it doesn't get any better. People help each other out in the Discord. Everyone is always happy to help and happy to give advice. You won't get a better community than the Raft community. And I say that with full honesty. Speaking about community, there is also a very big modding community in the game because, as I said, this game is expansive. It's kind of unlimited with the amount of stuff you can do to it and when you can mod a game the possibilities expand and the horizons just go so much further back now the modding community isn't as large as the likes of FIFA or GTA or Minecraft but it's very well run the way you install mods is so simple and so self-explanatory it's insane it's nothing like GTA or FIFA where you actually have to go through system files and delete stuff, install stuff, install special Vista Windows packages and all that rubbish. No, with a raft, it's simply download the mod loader, go onto the site, click install, and it hooks into the installer, and it's just a five second job. It is so good. If you guys want me to do a tutorial on modding raft, let me know in the comments down below. I'd be happy to do so. Now, moving on to the developers that surround raft. They've been developing this game pretty much day in, day out since 2018. Uh, they've given sneak peeks weekly when they can, 
plan for the renovation update and they'll continue to do so for the chapter 3 update. If you want to see those sneak peeks, they're in the Raft Discord. I'll link it down below. Make sure to join up if you're interested. The hype that builds around these updates in the Discord is unmissable. It's really fun to take part in. Raft isn't known for its beautiful graphics, but it has its beautiful moments and the scenery and immersion helps support that. Like the sky, when you actually focus on it, it's not the best thing, but they've done a great job with balancing graphics and optimization so that pretty much anyone can run the game at a decent rate. You can still get beautiful moments where the screenshots are impeccable. Sometimes it looks like real life almost. It fits the game perfectly and they've done a real good job of nailing down an art style and sticking to it and I love that because everything fits in the same theme. Even the font, which is the same one I use on my thumbnails by the way, Big Up Raft, is so suitable for the game and it just fits right in and you can tell they've put proper love and care into the textures because they just suit the game so well. As for the cons for Raft, yes there isn't many but I need an honest review so I've come up with a few that they can either improve or things that you just run into rarely but they are there and sometimes it can annoy you a little bit. Raft can sometimes feel a little incomplete and that's not me saying the storyline isn't complete or it doesn't feel good enough. The storyline is quite long, it doesn't take that long to complete, probably less than 24 hours. A, that's being expanded very soon and B, does that really matter? What I'm really talking about is the items, the cosmetics, the new animals in the latest update. A lot of things you can't interact with and they're kind of just there to try provide immersion but a lot of the time they actually end up deleting some of that immersion and getting rid of it because you can only stare at it like the toilet you can't use it come on guys you gotta use the toilet and with the new animals added in the latest update so the dolphins the whales you can't do anything with them yes if you get lucky like i did you can run on top of the whales but it's not very common and some of the items that you just can't interact with are books and things that are used for decoration and i understand that because a lot of things in minecraft or even in gta aren't interactable and i know there's limits to game design and you can't add interaction to absolutely everything but how about a pile of books that you can change out or a pile of books that you can write in or a pen that you can use even the plates and the cutlery i think we should be able to fill up a plate with food and eat it with the cutlery even if that's just a stupid animation and it takes a long time the option is there and i feel like something like that would add so much more completeness to the game and just make it feel more whole and more immersive now obviously with raft there's building you can build up your own raft you have complete customizability with paint patterns different blocks different textures even you can even get plant walls and i think it's just amazing the freedom you have but when making roofs and pointed roofs especially there can be some bugs and the building is often quite finicky at least i found it to be when i've made a few roofs i haven't made many oftentimes you'll get errors or you just won't be able to play something and a lot of the times things just don't make sense but that is something that will come with time and you might not even run into it you might not have to deal with that sort of thing and lastly obviously raft being a sea game there's gonna be weather and storms the classic sea storm big waves and that sort of thing and when those things do come it can be kind of immersion breaking because they've done a great job of implementing storms but in my opinion they haven't perfected them because a the sound of the storms increase really quickly really loudly and it kind of shocks you a little bit and sometimes the water gets so high that it comes on the raft just visually it doesn't actually go on the raft you can't sink or anything someone new to the game might think oh we're sinking yeah it's just a visual glitch because of how the sea is set up the raft can't actually change levels the sea can just visually so it goes over your raft and and it looks like you've sunk pretty much. Oftentimes your raft can be like two meters underwater and it will just come straight back up. And sometimes for me, that can be a little immersion breaking as well as when you're on the islands, sharks can often travel through islands and travel through objects. And it can kind of shock you sometimes because the behavior of the shark can be seen as a bit odd sometimes. Maybe that's a good thing. You don't want everything to be perfect. And they've done a great job of implementing AIs. For example, the warthog, the way it attacks is so unique and I love it. Fighting it is a whole different world. Honestly, Raft have done such a great job at implementing combat. This is once again me bringing up another point. Raft has done so well at bringing in elements of all different games and executing them together into this whole beautiful mess 
of a great complete game. <laughs> I know that sounds terrible, but it's not like the forest where it just focuses on survival and avoiding things and crafting. There is so much to this game. You're always doing different things. You're always smelting bricks while getting food or scavenging islands while killing sharks. There's always two things to do at once and it always keeps you busy. Let's go ahead and rate Raft out of 10. First off, as for graphics, I'm going to give it a good 8 out of 10 because it's not a game known for its graphics, but they've done such a good job of balancing optimization with pretty good graphics and you can often even mistake it for real life. Moving on, we're going to rate immersion out of 10. So as I said, sometimes it is broken with the storms and the bugs from the roofs and the animals behaving a bit weird sometimes. It's not perfect. I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10, which is quite harsh to be honest. I feel like soon enough that will be bumped up to a 9, 9.5 because Raft isn't meant to be this ultra realistic game like GTA. It's meant to be this fun environment where you kind of escape from the real world. So that's my immersion rating. So as for replayability, I'm going to give Raft a complete 10 out of 10 because even though you can complete the storyline you can just do it over again on a different difficulty or you can take a different path you can just play creative mode you can build houses you can go ahead and create a new world with your friends oftentimes people will complete the game and then come back in the next chapter and just replay it again and complete the game once more because the game is so fun and every time you almost get a different pathway because there's different islands there's different times that you can get things there's different strategies for obtaining items you might get the cooker first next time or you might focus on building up your raft before you survive and that sort of thing as for the uniqueness of raft now, I know open world survival games are all too common. There's hundreds of them and Raft is just a speck in the world, but they've combined all different aspects with survival, creative, building, storyline, killing animals, fighting bosses, scavenging loot, discovering history. It's just all there. So I'm going to give it a solid 9.5 out of 10. You guys do with that what you will. So that means my last score, is it worth it? In my opinion, it is 10 out of 10. You guys should 100% have a look at it at least it's currently on sale it was originally £14.99 with the steam summer sale it's now £10.04 or if you're American or just use dollars it's $13.94 so take my review with a pinch of salt you might not enjoy it as much as I do I truly think if you give Raft a chance and keep going back to it you'll absolutely fall in love with it and the community and everything surrounding it if I've helped you decide whether you should buy Raft today or you've just enjoyed the video please do leave a like down below and if you know around here why not subscribe there'll be plenty more videos like this coming out have a good day people and i'll see you in the next one